Hi, cartographers. Dr. Jason Van Horn, professor of geography here at Calvin University. In this second episode of transitioning from ArcMap to ArcGIS Pro, I'd like to show you how we move around in this environment of ArcGIS Pro, build a little bit of efficiency for our projects, and also show you the catalog structure. And as always, if you're interested in more formal content with me in the classroom, you can always consider joining the Masters in GIS at Calvin University. I'll put a link in the description below. Okay, let's get started. So here we are in the ArcGIS Pro environment. And just like in ArcGIS or ArcMap, you can move these panes around to gain more real estate. So if I grab on catalog, I can dock it anywhere that I want uh, in my interface here to gain more real estate or to adjust the location of different features. I can also close out the catalog or maybe the contents and now I can just see the giant data view and if we have large screens or a double screen setup or maybe three, uh, then this will give us a lot more real estate to work with. We could also even minimize this ribbon up here if we want to by left clicking here and choosing minimize ribbon. Okay, now let's reset our environment back to what we had before by just going in reverse. I'm going to uncheck minimize ribbon and here I'll go to the view option on the main menu. I'll choose catalog pane and I will choose the contents pane and I'm going to dock catalog back over here to the right and now we're back to where we were before. Now within this environment, you can see that I have started new project one, which was started in the first tutorial, and we're gonna continue with that here. Notice in the catalog, let's spend some time there, that we have these six different options, maps, toolboxes, databases, styles, folders, and locators. So starting with maps here, you can see that we have one map under maps, and that's this data view right here we call map, which has different uh, layers if we were to add them in here in the contents. So if we wanted to see any one of the maps that we create within a project, you'll be able to see them here. For example, let's go ahead and insert a, a new map. We could choose new map or different scenes, and we could even add in a different base map or new stereo map for stereo pair uh, comparisons. And let's just choose new map here. So a new map is created. It's called map one. We could right click here and, and we can dock it uh, wherever we want. We can, we can arrange it, right? We can make these horizontal or vertical. We can do different things to them. We can right click here and ju just choose the properties and rename it, or we can just simply with it selected, left click into it and rename it. So maybe like map inset. All right, and now it's updated in the tab. But also you can see over here in the catalog, this is where your uh, maps exist. So if you ever need to navigate to any one of these maps uh, or look at them, you can do that if you can do, want to click up here, you can do that too. All right. You can also, you know, uh, do whatever you want in terms of deletion or renaming here as well. Uh, and so you've got some different uh, properties. Okay. Now within toolboxes, you can see by default, the new project creates a, a project uh, toolbox that's the same name as the project. In this case, new project one. Here, if you've created many different uh, toolboxes that you work with, you can bring those in just by right-clicking on toolboxes and choosing Add Toolbox, okay? So we can add a toolbox and navigate to that if you've created one. But you can also here add within this project toolbox what you want. So if I right-click and choose New, we could add in uh, models or we could add in scripts to this toolbox or even we can build different tool sets, okay? All right. In terms of databases, as I mentioned in tutorial one or the first video in this series, you create a new project geo database with every project. Of course, you can adjust those global settings, so that would not be the case. You might connect to a different geo database for each project, however you want. But right out of the gate here, this is the way it works. So under databases, you'll have your geodatabase from the project. In this case, it's the same name 
as the project. And under folders, you can see that same geodatabase is here as well. And so if you add anything like import a feature class or a raster data set into this geodatabase, it will go here and here. It's a duplicate view uh, for databases and uh, folders. So let's just say that you have a, a folder uh, or a, a data set that uh, you are always using. What do you do and how do you deal with that? Well, one of the easiest ways to deal with that is to actually click on favorites here in the catalog. Notice here, I don't have any favorites. I haven't made anything favorite. But if you make things favorites, then they can persist in your project or even persist across projects, which is really cool. To do that, you can just click on add item and you can see here the different kinds of things we can add as favorites. We can add folders or databases, toolboxes, even server and style as different kinds of favorites. Okay, We could even add a statistical data collection uh, for this project or for existing projects. So here, if I want to add a folder, I'm just going to click on add folder. And now I'm popped into this add folder window. Now here on the left, I've got my navigation to my different uh, drives and my folders and different places on my computer or my, my network. But here uh, on the right, you can see I'm, I'm in Windows Workspace. Let's just say I want to make this project 01 uh, my favorite. So I click on that and choose OK. And now it's my favorite. And so now when I actually um, come back to this project, OK, and I go to favorites, then my folder is right here. Now, if I want this folder to exist across different projects, I can do that too. I can right click here and I could choose to keep this as add to new projects so that every single new project that I create, now this folder will appear in the favorites area within the catalog. It's pretty, pretty, pretty convenient, pretty slick. I love this feature. Okay, so back here in uh, project now, I have access to my geodatabase stuff. I have access to my folders and I also have access to this project. Now, let's just say if I didn't want this to be here under uh, favorites, I don't have to have it there. So I can just I could remove it and just go here to project and and add it under folders instead. So if I right click and choose add folder connection, and then I can choose my zero one project. And now it's here. And so we have different ways that we can connect and organize our uh, data access and our folder structure within the ArcGIS Pro environment which is very efficient for us. And, and so hopefully you'll be able to find kind of that, that sweet spot for how you organize uh, your projects and your folders. Okay, the last thing that I wanna show you here uh, is under styles and locators. If you build different styles or want to incorporate different styles into your map projects, you can do that here. Conveniently, the color brewer schemes are located here as well and incorporated within the ArcGIS Pro environment, which is a convenience for many of us, and locators that you might build. By default, the ArcGIS World Geocoding Service is active because I'm logged in to my organizational account. Um, but if you build different locators for geo, geocoding, uh, they can appear here as well. So that gives you just a feel for the overall arrangement here of ArcGIS Pro and the catalog. Thanks so much for watching this video and for your likes and subscription to this channel of All Things Maps.